You ready? Okay. So let's see, 5.1, y'all, is addition and subtraction of integers. So the subtraction symbol is used to indicate both a subtraction and a negative sign. Uh, it says to reduce confusion between the use of the symbol and the text. Uh, sometimes they use a raised negative sign for negative numbers, like in the way they have negative two for the opposite of a number. So it says to emphasize that an integer is positive, uh, sometimes a raised plus sign is used, like the way we have positive three. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, the number is just there, it's positive, okay? So anyway, first thing we're going to talk about, y'all, are these things called opposites. So opposites, it says that negative net integers are opposites of the positive integers. Okay, so for example, the opposite of positive five is negative five. And the same thing, positive integers are the opposites of negatives. So y'all, just to get an idea of what's going on here, if I have a number line, and my number line looks like this, okay? And right here in the middle, I have zero. And then the way our number lines work is when we move to the right, we have positive numbers. When we move to the left, we have negative numbers, right? So if we wanna find the opposite of a number, what you basically think of is, think of zero as kind of like a mirror, okay? So if I'm looking, say, at the number three, so if I'm standing where the number three is, think about this. If I'm standing, say, three feet away from a mirror, my reflection is going to be three feet in the other direction, right? It would look like I'm three feet behind the mirror. And so we would say the opposite of three is negative three, or we could also say the opposite of negative three is positive three. So to find the opposite, all we're going to do is change the sign of our numbers. So I'm going to go through these first six problems here, y'all, and we're just going to find the opposite of each of the numbers. Remember, the opposite just means change the sign. So the opposite of a positive 4, y'all, would be a negative 4, right? And the opposite of a negative 17 would be a positive 17, okay? And the opposite of the number positive C would be a negative C. Okay. Now, y'all, the opposite of zero is zero itself. Okay. And just like we did before, the opposite of a negative C would be a positive C. And finally, the opposite of A plus B. So if I'm doing the opposite of A plus B, there's two ways I can write it, y'all. I'm going to change the sign. Now, I'm not just going to change this sign right here, okay? I'm going to change both of them. So I'm going to change the sign in front of the A, and I'm going to change the sign in front of the B. That's one way I can write it. Another way I can write it is if I think of my number, the way it's written, as A plus B, but if I think about it in parentheses, the way we could write the opposite is negative A plus B. Okay, so these two right here are the same thing as the opposite of A plus B. Okay, just two different ways of writing it. Okay, so y'all, we're gonna talk about how do we add sign numbers using the number line. So it says, another model for addition of integers involves a number line and the idea of a cat walking on the number line. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and write what each of these figures kind of illustrate. So it says the first one illustrates three plus five. The second one illustrates negative three plus five. The third one illustrates negative three plus negative five, and the last one illustrates three plus negative five. Okay, so just so we get an idea on how do we do this using the number line, okay? So number one, we're always gonna start at zero, and we're always gonna face the positive or the right direction, okay? If the number is positive, we're gonna work, we're gonna walk forward, if the number is negative, we're going to walk backwards. So if you notice the first one, 3 plus 5. Here's the kitty. Look, the kitty is facing the right direction, right? So they're going to go three spaces. And then since the second number is also positive, they're going to go five spaces additional in that, in that uh, right direction, okay? So if the number is positive, we're going to walk forward. If the number is negative, we're going to walk backward. So look at the first number here, negative three. So y'all, the kitty is still facing the right direction. 
But since it's a negative three, they walked back, backwards, three spaces, right? And then they're going to go five spaces in the positive direction. Look where we end up at. We end up at negative two, okay? All right, negative three plus a negative five. So the kitty's still facing the right direction, but they're going to walk three spaces back, and then they're going to walk another five spaces back. Okay, so we end up at negative eight. Okay. And then three plus negative five. So again, we're still facing the positive direction. We walk forward three spaces, but then since my second number is a negative five, I'm gonna walk five spaces backwards and we end up at negative two, okay? So I got a problem for us here and it says plot the sum of one and negative six. Okay, so remember y'all, when my number is positive, we're going to go forward. When my number is negative, we're going to go backwards, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start off. I'm going to go forward one space, okay? But then I'm going to come back six spaces. So look, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. Where do we end up with? At negative five, okay? And again, y'all, all I'm doing is I'm... Uh, counting how many spaces I'm going to move, okay? So look, let's take a look at the next one. Negative one plus eight. So I'm going to go backwards one space, okay? Why am I going backwards? Because it's a negative one. Excuse me. Now, we're going to go eight spaces forward. I'm just going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Where do you, we end up with? We end up at seven, okay? So when my number is when my number is negative, I walk backwards. When my number is positive, I walk forwards, right? So look, let's just make sure that we're good with these two again. I'm going to come back just because I want to make sure that we're good with these. Okay. So look, first number is a positive one. So I'm going to go one space this way, right? Now look at the second number. It's a negative six. So I have to move six spaces, but to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where do we end up with? At negative five, right? Right. And again, y'all, uh, by the time if you end up teaching something like fourth or fifth grade, you're going to these the, your students are going to start getting introduced to sign numbers. And this is a really good way of showing them how to do it because it's visual again. Right. And and not only is it visual, but if you give them like um, a piece of paper with a number line and, you know, their pencil. Right. They, they're, they're doing that actual method of counting themselves. And that's kind of like the you know, when you're actually doing that physical act of moving your pencil, then it becomes a little bit more ingrained in our mind, right? So look, let's take a look at the next one. Negative one plus eight. So remember, I'm going to go backwards one space. Why backwards? Because it's a negative one. And now I'm going to go eight spaces in the positive direction. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. And where do we end up with? At seven. Okay. So again, just a reminder, when I look at the next one, remember, if my number is negative, I'm walking backwards, right? Okay, <clears throat> so negative two plus another negative two. So I'm gonna go left two, and then I'm gonna go left two again. And so we end up with at negative four. And then finally, negative five plus six. So again, y'all, I'm gonna go five spaces back and then I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And here's my number one, okay? So again, counting on the number line, y'all, especially for young kids is really a good way to do this because there's that physical manipulation of you putting your pencil on the paper and you counting, right? Now, obviously, as we got older, you know, we don't necessarily do that anymore. But for introducing somebody to adding sign numbers, this is a really great way of doing it, okay? Okay, so let me keep scrolling along here. Now, we have a number line model for subtraction, okay? So I'm going to go through this process, too, to make sure that we're good with it. So it says, another model for subtracting integers involves a number line and the idea of a cat walking on the number line. Okay, so let's take a look. The first one says this is 5 minus 3. Okay, 
The next one is going to be negative 3 minus 5. The third one is going to be negative 3 minus a negative 5. And the last one is a 3 minus negative 5. Okay. So now let's go ahead and figure out what are we doing here when we are subtracting. Okay. Number one, we're always going to start at zero, which is what we always did. And we're also going to face the positive direction. Perfect. Look what it says. If the number is positive, we're going to walk forward. That's what we've been doing before. If the number is negative, we're going to walk backwards. Now, here's the subtraction part. Subtraction says we're going to turn around and we're going to face the negative direction. Okay. We're going to turn around and we're going to face the negative direction. All right, so let's take a look at the first one, five minus three. So look, y'all, we're gonna walk five spaces. Now, why are we walking forward? We're walking forward because it was a positive five. But then when we have the subtraction sign, we're gonna turn around, okay? So we turned around. Now, it's a positive three, so I'm gonna walk forward, right? And you might say, well, look, aren't you walking backwards? No, because look at the little kitty up here. The little kitty is facing that direction, right? So we turned around because of that subtraction sign, right? So when I see that subtraction sign, that just tells me I'm gonna turn around, okay? All right, so look, let's take a look at the first one here, negative three. So remember, I'm always facing the right, but since it's a negative three, we walk backwards. Now we have the subtraction sign. Look at the kitty, the kitty turned around and that's a positive five. So the kitty goes five spaces that way, right? Where do we end up with? At negative eight. Okay. All right. We're going to do the same thing here. Look, y'all, we're going to start at zero. We're going to go negative three. So we walk backwards. What does this mean we're going to do now? We're going to turn around. Look at the kitty. The kitty is facing that direction. But now, since this is a negative number, we're going to walk five spaces backwards. So the kitty walked five spaces back. Look where we end up with. We end up at positive two. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So 3 minus negative 5, since that's a positive 3, the kitty walked forward. Subtract means turn around, right? So the kitty turned around. And then since it's a negative 5, they walked five spaces backwards. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here. Okay. We're going to start off really slow. Look at the first number, negative 1. So I'm going like this, right? So I'm heading in that direction. Okay. Now, when I see my subtraction sign, I'm going to turn around, okay? But since my number is a negative 3, y'all, I'm going to walk three spaces backwards. One, two, three, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Wait, let me see. Sorry. Oh, let's try to get my eraser here. Okay, let's see. Negative 1, so right here, I'm, oh, I'm actually facing that direction, right? because we walk backwards. Okay, sorry, my bad. Now we're gonna turn around. So we're gonna be facing this direction and we're gonna go negative three, okay? But since it's negative three, we're gonna go one, two, three. Look where we end up with. We end up with at a positive two, okay? Okay, so we always start facing the right, okay? So look y'all, I'm facing the right. I'm, go I'm facing that direction, okay? I'm not necessarily going in that direction, but I'm facing that direction. Okay, first number is a negative one, so I'm going to go over here, okay? Now, I'm facing the right, okay? But since there's a subtraction sign, I'm now going to turn around, okay? So my face is going this way. Since it's a negative four, I'm going to count four spaces backwards. One, two, three, four, and I end up with a positive three, okay? Okay. Let's do the same thing here with the next one. So we're going to go, we're facing the right direction. We're always facing the right direction. I'm going to go positive two spaces, okay? Now, remember, I'm facing the right direction, but now I'm going to turn around, okay? Since it's a negative three, y'all, I'm going to walk backwards. One, oops, I'm going to walk backwards. One, two, three, and I end up with a positive five, okay? All right, so we got one more. Remember, I'm always facing the right direction. Negative one says I'm gonna go backwards one space. I'm still facing that direction. But now we're gonna turn around because there's a minus sign, okay? 
Okay, since it's a positive two, y'all, we're gonna go two spaces in the right direction, on the left, I'm sorry, two spaces forward. One, two, oops, right there. So I end up with negative 30, okay? All right, so let me keep moving along here. Now, yo, there's a, another way we can talk about integers and this way is called the chip model. So sometimes they use like poker chips or whatever. Uh, I don't know if you necessarily wanna introduce poker chips to elementary school kids, right? But anyway, so it says, look, positive integers are yellow chips and negative integers are done with red chips, okay? So one red chip neutralizes one yellow chip. So yo, if I were to have my circle here, okay? Remember, positives are yellows. Okay, so let me see if I can change this a little bit. Let me see if I can add a pen. And let's make it yellow. There we go. Okay, so these are positive numbers, right? Yellows are positive numbers. Reds are negative numbers, okay? So when I have this right here, y'all, the value that I really have here is zero because a negative and a positive are going to cancel each other out, right? Now, again, I'm just kind of trying to show you the idea here, okay? So look, let me draw, I'm going to draw two more circles just so that we have an idea of what we're talking about. So remember, positives are yellow chips, right? And negatives are red chips, okay? So if it's positive, it's gonna be yellow, yeah. And if it's negative, it's gonna be red, okay? So remember what we said, a positive chip and a negative chip are gonna cancel each other out. So this guy and this guy would cancel each other out. And this guy and this guy would cancel each other out so it would really be left with one positive chip. So the value of that there, y'all, is a positive one, right? Now, if I look at the same thing here, remember this positive and that negative are gonna cancel each other out, but I'm still left with two red chips. Well, two red chips is really a negative two. So what I'm, what I'm trying to point out here, this is the one way that you can, again, show kids how to do adding and subtracting using, again, another method. Again, y'all, kids really learn a lot by that physical ma manipulation because they can see it, they can feel it, they can actually do it, right? So if you give them a number line, they can do the counting thing, right? If you give them like these yellow and red chips, they can kind of play with the chips and figure out what's going on, right? So <clears throat> if you notice here, and this is exactly what they had here, guys. What I drew over here is the same thing that they have. So look, two, two yellows makes it a positive two, right? Uh, let's see. Remember, this red and that negative are going to cancel. There's still a positive two. That one and that one and that one, that one cancels, still a positive two, right? So on and so forth. That's that's in essence what they're kind of trying to show us here, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out which model illustrates negative three plus six. So remember, guys, negative are the red chips, one, two, three. Positives are the yellow chips, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out, okay, if I look at my pictures here, okay, negative three plus six, do any of my circles here look something like this? If I look at the three circles do I have, do any of those circles have, I know they, I don't, I don't wish they would have used chips, right? Because they didn't use chips, they used the actual signs, right? And again, if it helps y'all, remember this means negative, 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 and this means positive, 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 okay? Do I have six of them there? Yeah. Do any of these models here, A, B, C, or D, for the first part, right here, oops, this part right here, do any of those look like what I kind of have right there? Which one would you say looks most like that? If I look at my problem, anybody know? Anybody know which one looks most like this? Which one looks most like this part right here? Which one has three negatives and six positives? Which one would you say, A, B, C, or D? C does, right? So there you go. And that's really all I'm looking at here, okay? So again, this is sort of the idea. And again, y'all, I want you to, I mean, I don't have any poker chips here. And then if, if you're taking the class online or whatever, right? It's not like you could, but I mean, but the idea is, when you're in class, this is kind of what you want to show them, okay? 
So look, negative six plus three, I'm gonna look for six negative signs and three positive signs. So if I look at, if I think about that, six negative signs and three positive signs, would you guys say, would you guys say C again, right? C looks like it, right? There we go. So C again, okay. Now let's look at the next one, negative two plus another negative two. So I wanna see, do I have two negative signs and then another two negative signs? Uh, yeah, look at C again, right? So I don't know if it's always gonna be C, but in this, in this, at least in this problem, C seems to be the one that's working out, right? Because I got a total of four negative signs, okay? Now let's look at the last one, positive four and a negative one. So I want four positive signs, right? So positive was the yellow, so I went one, two, three, four, and one negative sign. So which one has four positives and one negative? D does, right? Very good. And that's what you're looking for, okay? Okay, so let me keep moving along here, y'all. And now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to have... Um, we're gonna do this idea, but now we're gonna be subtracting. So negative three, take away negative two. So y'all, what I wanna think about here is I wanna think about, I had three negative signs and we took away two of those negative signs, right? Why are we taking away two? Because number one, it's subtraction. Why are we taking away negative signs? Because it's a negative two. So if I have three negative signs and I take away two of them, it looks like C is gonna be the one that we have, okay? Now, I'm gonna do the same thing for part B. Part B says, look, I wanna have four negative signs and I'm gonna take away one of them. So if I have four negative signs and I take away one of them, that looks like I would be left with A, right? Which leaves me with three negative signs, okay? All right. Now, look at the next one here, three minus a negative two, okay? So y'all, the way I would approach this problem here, three take away negative two. I want you to think about what we're taking away. We're taking away two negative signs. So if I look at my choices, A, B, C, and D, it looks like C and D are the ones where we're taking away two negative signs, okay? So I already know from the get-go that I'm not gonna look at that one and I'm not gonna look at that one because I'm taking away three negative signs there and I really only wanna take away two of them, okay? So the next thing I need to figure out is if I wanted to start off with a three, okay? I'm gonna look at these two here. Now, y'all remember, I wanna mention something. When we have the positive and the negative, those really cancel each other out, right? So if we cancel those out, look what we were left with. We were left with three positives, right? If we did the same thing here and we cancel those out, look how many we were left with. We were left with four, but we, we didn't have four to begin with. We had three. So again, C would be my choice here, okay? Okay, now for this last part, now again, I'm just trying to zoom in so I can get everything on there. I want us to look at what are we taking away? We're taking away a positive two. So I wanna look at my choices and how many of those up there, my A, B, C, and D, which ones are taking away two positive signs? Well, it looks like B and D are. So I'm not gonna look at A and I'm not gonna look at C, okay? I'm gonna look at A and D. Now remember, I'm taking away a positive two. So I wanna start, I wanna make sure that I have five negative signs, okay? Now, again, y'all, I'm just going to kind of walk through the process. Remember, these pieces here cancel each other out. Those pieces there cancel each other out. So I want to see which one started off with five negatives. One, two, three, four. Nope. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. So D would be my choice here. Okay. D would be my choice. Okay. Now, guys, I want to, I want to, I want to point something out here. I'm going to come back to this problem, okay? So we know D is our choice, right? Now, just to give you a heads up, if we take away those two positive signs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're left with a negative seven, right? And that's what it's kind of shown me how to do. And I can do the same thing over here. 
look, if we take away those two negative signs, I have one, two, three, four, five, I'm left with a positive five, right? So again, it just goes to show me what my final answer is going to end up being, right? And I could do that with every one of those problems, okay? So let's keep moving along here, y'all. And it says, in the in each of the following problems, write either an addition or a subtraction expression and then solve it. Okay, so let's take a look here. It says, the hottest temperature ever recorded in a certain state was 126 degrees Fahrenheit. And it was recorded on July 6, 1936, less than five months earlier on February 15th. The lowest temperature was a negative 63 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the difference between the hottest and the lowest temperature? Okay, so y'all, uh, again, if I was trying to show this to elementary school kids, right, or even junior high kids, maybe like sixth grade or something, uh, guys, I'm going to be, like I said, I've told you before, I've never taught elementary school, I've never taught junior high, right, I've always taught at the college level, but what I would do, because I think this would make sense, is to say, look, we're gonna draw a number line, but y'all, instead of my number line going left and right, my number line is gonna go up and down, okay? And I'm gonna say, like, right about here is zero degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So when I were to think about the number 126 degrees, that's a positive. That number 126 is gonna be all the way up there, okay? And then when I think about my number negative 63, since it's negative, it's gonna be down here. And, and guys, if you think about this, uh, you know, young kids may not know this, third graders, or well, maybe like fourth graders, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But you've heard the, the term below zero, right? So look where the 63 is, it's below zero. What we're trying to find is how far is it from here to here? So if you, again, if you're showing this to a fifth grader or a sixth grader, you can ask them, if I want to get from negative 63 back to zero, how much do I have to move? Well, I got to move 63 spaces. And then if I want to get to zero to 126, how much do I have to move? Oh, I have to move 126 spaces. So how many spaces did I move total? I don't know. We're adding those numbers together. So six and three is nine. Uh, two and six is eight and 189 degrees, right? So that's the difference between the hottest and lowest temperature. Again, but drawing that picture, I think, makes a whole lot of sense. Okay. Now, let's take a look at part B. The temperature was negative 5 degrees, and then it rose 16. What's the new temperature? I would probably do the same thing. I'd say, look, here's 0. Okay, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And we're going to rise 16 spaces, okay? So, y'all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? And I'm just going to start counting, okay? Now, again, what I want to do is I want to count. I'm going to go 16 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, okay? So I'm right here. I'm going to label those numbers, okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So where did we end up with? We ended up at 11. Okay. Now, I'm going to do part C exactly the same way. It says the temperature went down from 48 to negative 2. How many degrees did the temperature fall? Okay. So look, y'all, and you might say, really, do you have to draw a number line and do you got to mark all those numbers? I hope not. Okay, but look, I'm going to put 0 here. Here's 48, and we dropped down to a negative 2. Okay, so that's supposed to be a 48. So look, y'all, let me ask you a question. From here to here, how many spaces do I have to move? Anybody know? To get from 48 to zero, how many spaces do I got to move? 48 spaces, right? To move here, how many spaces do I got to move? Another two. How many spaces did we move total? We moved 50 spaces, right? And again, you know, kids are really smart, right? So you can show them this kind of stuff and they're going to get the idea, okay? There's a part D to this question. Uh, Brooke, 
Brooke's house had a temperature of 55. She put on the heat and it rose by 14. She was still cold, so Brooke lit a fire, which increased the temperature by 10. What was the temperature of the house then? Okay, so let's see. It was at 55. She turned on the heater and it went up 14 degrees. Okay. And then she lit a fire, which raised it another 10. Okay. So, y'all, we're going to just go one piece at a time. 55 and 14, that would give me uh, 69. And then if we're going to add another 10 to that, that's going to give us 79, right? Okay. So here's another problem. And it says, in each of the following problems, write an addition or subtraction problem and then go ahead and solve it. Okay, so let's see if we can do part A. Uh, Carlos spent too much money and had a bank, an account balance of negative 57. He deposited $159, uh, I'm sorry, he deposited his $159 paycheck. How much money did he have then? Okay, so let's take a look. He started off with a negative 57. Okay, and then he added 159. How much does he have left? He should be left with 102, right? Because straight down the hall, outside. All right, so he's left with $102, right? Why? Because he already owed the bank 57. So if he pays him 57 from his 159, now he has 142. Let's take a look at part B. Tara has $44 on the bank. So here's my 44. She spent $62 on shoes. So we're taking away that 62. By how much money was she overdrawn? Okay, so y'all, um, when you're, if again, if you're teaching say fifth grade or sixth grade and you're already starting to do sign numbers, typically what we do is we say, look, let's write 62 and let's subtract 44. I'm gonna borrow one from here. 12 minus 4 is 8, that's 18. But because we're taking away a bigger number from a smaller number, it's going to be a negative 18, right? Okay. Let's take a look at part C. It says Jenna was given $80 for her birthday, so $80. She bought 56, right? And then she bought a purse for 40, okay? So, again, a couple of ways you can go about thinking about this, y'all. If she spent $56 and she spent $40, I know she had 80, but doesn't that mean that she spent a total of 96, right? If she spent 50 and 56 and 40, she really spent a total of 96. And again, I would probably do the subtraction just like I did the other one over here. I would say, look, let me take 96 minus 80. That's gonna give me 16, but because I'm taking away a bigger number from a smaller number, it's gonna be a minus 16, right? All right, and then we have a part D here, okay? It says Martin was $50 overdrawn, okay? So Martina already owed $50, and then he had to spend 237 on his car, okay? The question says, how much was he overdrawn then? Well, if he already owed $50 and he borrowed another $237, now he owed $287, right? Okay, so the next one here, y'all, says a football team lost $26, 26 yards, I'm sorry, on their first play. Since they lost 26 yards, we're going to think about that as another, as a negative 26 but then they gained 20 yards. So it's a positive 20 on the next play. So look y'all, if we went back 26 and then we went forward 20, again, if you were to think about like the way we did those first couple of problems on my number line, right? Here's zero, right? I went backwards 26, right? And then I went forwards 20. So where am I left with? I'm left at minus six, right? Because if I, like if I owed you $26 and I paid you 20, you would say, hey, that's great, but we're not good yet, right? You still owe me six. Okay, so for the next problem here, it says 
The temperature is 81 degrees Fahrenheit and it's supposed to drop 25 degrees by midnight. What is the expected temperature? Okay, so y'all, on the directions on this problem, it says write both a subtraction and an addition expression, okay? So let's take a look, part A, we have 81 degrees and if it's gonna drop, is that gonna be adding or subtracting if it's gonna drop? What do y'all think? Drop, add or subtract? Subtract, right? So look, we're gonna take away 25. Okay, now that's my subtraction model. Okay, now my addition model, y'all could say 81 plus a negative 25. It's the same thing. When you add a negative, it's the same thing as subtracting. Okay, and again, if I were just to subtract 81 minus 25, I'm gonna borrow one from here, that's a seven. So 11 minus five is six and seven minus two is five. So it's supposed to be 56, right? All right, let's do part B. It says, Moses has overdraft privileges at his bank. If he had $300 in his checking account, so we start off with a positive three, but then he wrote a check for 330, so I'm gonna subtract 330. What would the balance be? Okay, so look, there's my subtraction problem, y'all. My addition problem is just gonna be a 300 plus a negative 330, right? And again, think about it this way. If I owed you $300, I'm sorry, if I had $300, but I owed you $330, you would say, hey, that's great that you gave me $300, but you still owe me $30, right? As, the, as your students get older, and again, I know that most of y'all are going for elementary school, maybe, I don't think anybody was going to go for junior high, but if you ended up teaching fifth grade or sixth grade, you know, doing the number line thing works really well or doing the poker chip thing works really well. But as you get to dealing with older students, uh, using the idea of money comes in pretty handy, like positive being how much money I have, negative being how much money I owe. So if I have $81, but I owe you 25, I'm left with 56. That idea works really well for older students, okay? Okay. So again, when you're dealing with, again, fifth graders or sixth graders, like I said, y'all, this class really preps you for teaching anywhere between kinder and eighth grade. Uh, so this is more for the junior high level students. What we do with a problem like this, and I think especially with junior high kids, using like different colors and stuff, that really helps out. So when they see a minus sign, think about this as a negative one. And what happens is that negative one multiplies to both of these numbers here. So I'm left with a seven, negative one times five is a minus five, a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's a positive five X, okay? And then seven minus five is gonna leave me with a two and a plus five X. And again, I know everybody here has had college algebra, so you've done some of this kind of manipulation before, but again, this is how I would show somebody who's like say in sixth grade or something to do it, okay? Again, y'all, I would do the same thing for the next part. I would go three X minus, now look what we have. We have a negative X and a minus two Y, okay? And again, I would say, look, I wanna think about this as a negative one. And so what the negative one does, y'all, is it changes my signs here. So I'm left with a three X. And if I change my signs here, that becomes a positive X and a positive two Y. And again, I can think about the number in front of that X being a one. So a three X and a one X is really gonna leave me with a four X and then a plus two Y. And y'all, just the idea again, behind that negative one, look what it did, it changed my signs. This positive now became negative. This negative now became positive, right? And showing that to, to students, especially in that, junior high grade, I think, becomes really helpful. Okay. okay, so the next problem here, y'all, says determine the number of terms in the arithmetic sequence below, okay? So let's take a look here. Uh, we're trying to figure out how many numbers do we have? And so I want you to think about this, y'all. Okay, here is my number zero, okay? And then in the positive direction, we got one, two, three, all the way down to 60, okay? And in the negative direction, we have negative one, negative two, all the way down to negative 80, right? And we're trying to count how many numbers do we have, okay? So y'all, y'all agree that from here to here, there's really 80 numbers right there? 
because negative 80, okay. And then in the positive direction, let's see, oops, positive direction from here to here, there's really 60 numbers right there. But then look, y'all, what number do I have right here? I got the number zero. So there's another number there. So look, 80 and 60 is 140, but 140, oops, 140 plus the number zero is going to give me 141 numbers, okay? So I got 141 numbers here. Okay, so y'all, when I was making the notes for this, and I kind of just copied this problem in, uh, again, I was remembering everybody here has already had college algebra, but the idea is, and not, the, it's not so much that you've already had college algebra, and we kind of did this in college algebra, but how would you show this to, again, say a, a seventh or an eighth grader? So I'm going to kind of take a little detour over here on the side, and we'll come back to the problem. And we're going to talk a little bit about absolute value. Okay. Absolute value is just the value of a number without the sign, oops, or it's the distance from that number to zero, okay? That's what the absolute value means, okay? So again, and, and you know, if you're dealing with say seventh graders or eighth graders, then the money thing might come in handy already. Like uh, anybody here use Cash App? Yeah, you use Cash App, right? So you send money and maybe you've, you know, one of your friends says, hey, can I borrow $20? Okay, I'm gonna Cash App, cash app it to you. But remember, you still owe me $20, right? And kids use Cash App a lot, right? I mean, a lot of them do, especially in the junior high age. I think they're already starting to use stuff like that. So the money thing comes in pretty handy. So what I want to show y'all is what's the difference between these two numbers, okay? So first off, that number is negative. That means that I owe $30, right? This number here is positive. So this means I have $30, okay? What the absolute value in these little bars, y'all, are my absolute value signs, okay? What the absolute value tells me is I know one of them you owe and I know one of them you have. The absolute value just says, what's the value without the sign? Meaning how much money do you owe? Oh, well, you owe $30 or you have $30, okay? So the absolute value, it does not worry about do you have it or do you owe it. It's just asking you how much do you have or how much do you owe. So what I want to point out is that if I told you I took the absolute value of a number and I got 30, what was my number? Well, it could have been a negative 30 or it could have been a positive 30. Okay. So knowing that, then we have a little rule, y'all, that says if the absolute value of Y is equal to A, then either y can be the number a or y can be the number negative a, okay? So the absolute value of a number is equal to some value here. Now guys, this number needs to be positive, okay? It can't be a negative number. Then my number itself can be that same number or it can be the opposite of the number, okay? So look, I'm gonna use this idea here to solve this problem. So I kind of want to think about this as my Y, and I want to think about that as my A, okay? So I'm going to have two problems, y'all. I'm going to say that X minus 2 is either equal to 2, or X minus 2 is equal to a negative 2, okay? And again, if I'm solving equations, and then again, in 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade, you're doing this already, I would say, look, I'm going to undo that by adding 2 to both sides, and I would get X equals 4, and I would add two here to both sides, and I would get x equals zero. And so I'm gonna have two answers, right? One of them's gonna be four and one's gonna be zero. And right here, y'all, when you're entering this in in my lab, all you're gonna do is put four comma zero, or you can put zero comma four. The order in which you put them in is not important. It just says use a comma. You don't have to write the x equals. You just have to write the value, okay? So four and zero, okay? So look, for part B, I'm going to do the same thing here, okay? But I want to get my problem so that it looks like this. The absolute value of y is equal to a. And I have this plus 5 here. So, y'all, before I get started, my first step is going to be to subtract 5. 
So that's going to leave me with the absolute value of x. Uh, 16 minus 5 is going to give me an 11. Okay. So now that I have it like that, my problem here looks a lot like this one. Okay. So I'm going to say, look, either x is equal to 11 or x is equal to a negative 11. And right here, y'all, I'm just going to put an 11 and a negative 11. Okay. But I have to get it in this form first. Okay. So I can't just start off by saying x plus 5 equals 16, x plus 5 equals negative 16. I have to get it like that first, where I have the absolute value just on one piece. Okay. Okay. Now, for the next one here, it says 11, the absolute value of 11x is equal to the negative absolute value of 11x. Okay. So let's take a look here. Y'all, the way I would do this problem here is I would say, look, let me pick a couple of numbers for x. Let's pick, say, x equals 0. If I were to put x equals 0, I would have 11 times 0 supposed to be equal to a negative 11 times 0. Well, 11 times 0, y'all, would give me a 0. And negative 11 times 0 is 0. The absolute value of 0 itself is 0. So, so far, this thing works when x equals 0. Now, I might want to check. And again, y'all, doing this kind of guessing and checking is a good way to introduce some of these ideas. Now I might say, look, let me pick a number that's positive, like, oh, I don't know, 2. Okay. So look, I'm going to say, what's 11 times 2? And is that equal to negative 11 times 2 in the absolute value? So 11 times 2 is 22. And this is a negative 22. But remember what the absolute value means. The, this, I understand, means I have 22. And this, I understand, means I owe 22. But the absolute value is just asking how much do you have or how much do you owe? Well, I have 22. Oops. And I owe 22. And yeah, those two work out. So look, it works out for positive numbers too. Well, you know what? Let me try a negative number. Okay. So I'm going to say, look, let me try, I don't know, x equals, we'll keep it simple. Let's try x equals negative 1. Okay. So look, y'all, I'm going to write absolute value of 11 times a negative 1 is equal to the absolute value of a negative 11 times a negative 1, okay? So 11 times negative 1 is a negative 11. A negative times a negative is a positive, okay? But again, just like we did before, look, the absolute value, I know this means I owe 11, but how much do I owe 11? I know this means I have 11, but how much do I have 11? Okay, so look, it works out for 0, it works out for positive numbers, and it works out for negative numbers. So what does it work for? All integers, right? It works for all integers because I'm trying zero, I'm trying positive numbers, I'm trying negative numbers, so it's going to work for every single one, okay? All right. So we're almost done here, y'all. Uh, it says, look, an arithmetic sequence may have either a positive or a negative difference. In each of the following arithmetic sequences, find the difference and write the next two terms. Okay, so let's take a look here, y'all. Zero, negative two, negative four, negative six. What do you think the next two numbers would be? If I'm going zero, negative two, negative four, negative six, what do you think the next two terms would be? Yeah, very good. Negative eight and negative 10, right? Okay, so the difference says, what are we doing each time? Do you guys agree? Are we adding two or are we subtracting two? Or are we adding a negative two? We're adding a negative two, right? So my difference here, y'all, is going to be a negative two. Okay. Now, let's take a look at part B. I'm going to write it out just a little bit more. So look, I have an X plus Y. And then we have an X. What did we get rid of from here to here? What did we subtract? What do we not have anymore? The y, right? And now look at the next one, x minus y. So look, we subtracted a y here. From here to here, we took away a y. If we subtract y again, look, there it is, x minus y. The next two terms, y'all, x minus 2y, x minus 3y. Why? Because we keep taking away an extra y, or we're adding a negative y each time. So what's my difference? A negative y. Okay. Each time we keep taking away that letter y. Okay. 
All right. So the next one here, y'all says, I think this is the last problem too. Yeah, this is the last one we got here. It just says solve the following equations. Okay. So again, y'all, if you do end up teaching something like sixth or seventh grade, these are the kind of problems you're going to be showing them. So x plus three equals one. So remember what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get the x by itself. So I always tell my students, look, if it's add, you're going to undo it by subtracting. Okay. Because if I have $3 and I owe you $3, we are even Stevens. Okay. But if I have a dollar and I owe you three, hey, I still owe you two. Right. Okay. And if I were to do part B, negative four plus X equals negative three. Now, y'all, we talked about it a little bit, but I want to kind of just go over it again. Remember when I'm adding numbers, which one do I add first and second doesn't really matter. So I might rewrite this as X plus a negative four equals negative three. Okay. And then I would say, look, if I have a negative four here, how am I going to undo it? I'm going to add four to both sides. Okay. Why? Because if I owe you four and I have four, we're now even Stevens, right? But if I owe you three and I have $4 and I give you the $3 that I owe you, I'm still left with one, right? And then finally, part C, negative X equals seven. Okay, negative X equals seven. Okay. So y'all, the way I would go ahead and do this problem, I would think about this as a negative one times X equals seven. And just like we've been doing the opposite, the opposite of multiply would be to divide. So I would divide both sides by a negative one because a negative divided by a negative we know is a positive and a positive seven divided by a negative one would give me a minus seven, okay? Again, y'all, so I just kind of wanted to go over some of this stuff here. This is 5.1. Like I said, chapter five is really short. It's two sections. So today is 5.1. On Wednesday will be 5.2. Uh, and then next week we'll start chapter six, okay? So let me go ahead and stop recording. Let's come back over here.